TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vows to preempt any Iranian attempts to attack the Jewish state, a lesson learned from the 1973 Yom Kippur War. Israel delivers an Iron Dome surface-to-air defense battery to the United States Army at a time of increased attacks by Iranian proxy militias against U.S. diplomatic and military installations in Iraq. The United Nations hails a summit held by rival delegations of Libya, dubbing it a right step in the right direction. The Yom Kippur War of 1973 has taught Jerusalem the necessity to preempt potential threats by thwarting concentration of hostile powers along the borders of Israel. Addressing an annual memorial ceremony for Israel's fallen during the War of 73 via pre-recorded message, Netanyahu drew a direct line between the lessons learned and Israel's activities to preempt an Iranian attack. אילו היינו נוקטים מכת מנע, פני המערכה היו שונים לחלוטין. מכת מנע זה דבר קשה מאוד לעשות. אבל אני למשל יודע, בעקבות מלחמת יום הכיפורים, שאם איראן רוצה להתבסס בגבולנו הצפוני ועדיין לא תקפה אותנו, אסור לנו לתת לה להתבסס שם. ולכן אנחנו מונעים את ריכוזי הכוחות, נלחמים בהם, לקח ישיר של מלחמת יום הכיפורים. מלחמת יום הכיפורים היא גם תזכורת תמידית לחשיבות העוצמה. The Israeli premier went on to list the significance of bolstering Israel's power, which already yields significant results. העוצמה סללה דרך לשלום עם מצרים ואחר כך עם ירדן, והעוצמה יסדה את ההסכמים ההיסטוריים שרקמנו עם איחוד הבוריות ועם בחריין. העוצמה תביא עוד הסכמי שלום עם עוד מדינות ערביות ומוסלמיות. העוצמה תאפשר לנו, בעזרת השם, להתגבר בהצלחה גם על משבר הקורונה. העוצמה וההתמדה. In contrast to Netanyahu, Israeli Defense Minister and alternate Premier Benny Gantz asserted that the war has changed Israel's attitude in many fields, including the need to remain humble and strive for peace. שיעור בסולידריות חברתית. מאז התגייסתי והפכתי לחצ... לקצין ולמפקד, לראש המטה הכללי ולשר הביטחון, אני נושא עימי את לקחי המלחמה. להשתנות, להגיב למציאות ולחתור תמיד לשלום. Gantz, who formerly served as the 20th IDF Chief of General Staff, also highlighted the changing theater in all that pertains to threats to the peace and security of the Jewish state, echoing Netanyahu's emphasis on the need to preempt any attack. לפעול נגדנו בסייבר ובמקומות אחרים, לבניית כוח רקטי ויכולת חדירה אווירית מחכים לשעת כושר. מולם אנחנו עומדים מוכנים ודרוכים בכל עת, מולם אנו פועלים ופוגעים במאמצי ההתעצמות שלהם מקרוב ומרחוק. Amid efforts to combat the spread of the corona contagion that moved the leadership in Jerusalem to reimpose a crippling closure on the public sphere, Minister Gantz likened the current crisis to a war at a time when another 8,919 Israelis were confirmed as carriers of the disease since yesterday, raising the current total number of diagnosed individuals to 68,811, of who 810 are in critical condition. <laughs> Before the days, we are standing before a war in the same way. 
צריך להודות ביושר. גם הפעם נתפסנו לא מוכנים. הרעבנו את מערכת הבריאות המצוינת שלנו לאורך שנים. לא הגבנו כראוי, וגם הפעם המחיר שאנו משלמים ונשלם בחיי אדם כבד מאוד. אבל גם הפעם אנחנו ננצח. In other news, Israel delivered an Iron Dome surface-to-air defense battery to the United States Army, the first of two batteries procured by Washington exactly a year prior. The sophisticated system was specifically modified for the U.S. Army and has the capacity to intercept short- to medium-range projectiles, including unmanned aerial vehicles and rockets. The batteries that we are delivering to the U.S. actually will be adjust to the U.S. requirements with the policy of the United States and with the standards that the U.S. Army asks for. No difference in the performance. Same performance as the Iron Dome Israeli system. Iron Dome system will celebrate this coming year 10 years of operational service. During those years, the Iron Dome system intercepts more than 2,400 of hostile rockets and missiles that were launched towards Israel. And the system saved hundreds of lives. It is interesting to know that while the U.S. Army did not provide specific information about the deployment of its newly attained Iron Dome battery, Washington is evidently losing patience with the Baghdad central government of Iraq over the latter's incompetence vis-à-vis -vis protection of foreign diplomatic missions stationed in the war-torn country. As a result of an increase of rocket attacks believed to be perpetrated by Iranian proxies operating in the country against U.S. missions and bases housing American troops, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo delivered the Iraqi government notice of an embassy closure warning unless the Iraqi government steps up efforts to provide security. In a public statement addressing yet another deadly rocket attack earlier this week, which claimed the lives of an Iraqi mother and three of her children, among others, the U.S. State Department voiced outrage and stressed, we have made the point before, that the actions of lawless Iran-backed militias remains the single biggest deterrent to stability in Iraq. The Iraqi security forces' failure to thwart such attacks is seemingly terrifying the newly established government, after years of conflict and public unrest, voicing concerns over an imminent American withdrawal. The Iraqi top diplomat further expressed concern over the signal an American withdrawal would deliver to the Iranian-backed terror groups raging rampant across Iraq. Turning to Egypt, where a summit was held between Libya's rival Western-based Government of National Accord and Eastern-based Libyan National Army as part of an attempt by both sides to reach a comprehensive agreement to end domestic hostilities. The UN support mission in Libya, UNSMIL, said that delegations representing the government of national accord in the Libyan Arab Armed Forces and comprising of police military officers have concluded two days of security and military talks. Those, days were, those talks were facilitated by the UN uh, support mission in Libya and held in Egypt, in Hurghada. The UN spokesperson further provided an overview of matters discussed in the meeting.
The mission says the discussions were marked by a spirit of responsibility, transparency, and mutual trust. They addressed a number of pressing security and military issues, including confidence-building measures, security arrangements, and tasks and responsibilities of the Petroleum Facilities Guard. The mission welcomes the outcomes of uh, reached during the discussion. Unsmil hopes that this positive development will contri contribute to paving the way towards a final and lasting ceasefire agreement. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up Japan in prayer for its salvation and peace. In addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, and for all of those who are impacted by the corona contagion and its economic ramifications worldwide. Furthermore, I would like to also thank all of our partners for your dedicated support for TV7's ministry here in Jerusalem both by means of prayer and finance. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Tov and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.